right, Tennessee Valley. We're right up on the 7 o'clock hour on this beautiful Tuesday morning. And we have Pastor Mark Barrows on the line. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Faithful. How are we doing this morning? Oh, it's a good-looking Tuesday morning, a terrific Tuesday to be giving the Lord the praise. Amen. With that said, we're going to let you bring that word in to help some people along the way today. So, Tennessee Valley, if you will, I need you to open up your heart, your soul, and your mind and receive this powerful word from Pastor Mark Barrows with Christ in action. Take it away, Pastor. All right, indeed, delighted to be shouting the good news this morning, reporting the report of the Lord. That's what we report to you every day. The report of the Lord is always good news because it's about the gift of God given to us all. That God so loved the world, every single one of us, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever of us will believe on him would not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life. Well, what is that? Is that some ethereal substance that Jesus was talking about in St. John chapter 3, verse 16? No, he makes it clearer for us in St. John chapter 17 and verse 3, where he says, this is eternal life, that we would know the true and living God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Well, what was he telling us, friend? He was telling us a singular truth that we all can embrace and accept and so become unified in the faith of God. That's what we're talking about, unity of the faith. And of course, we're talking about Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, where it talks about us all coming to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or mature man to the fullness of the stature of who Christ is. Yes, friend, we are all called to that, and that is not just to those souls, those so-called Christians or Christ followers. It is God's way of bringing us all together in oneness in Christ. That is a part of Christ's call to us, yes, to redeem us from our sins, but we are taught both in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 10, 11, and in Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, that God's great design in Christ is in the fullness of time to bring all things together in one in Christ. And so that's what he's up to. And coming into the unity of the faith of all of those who were created in his image and likeness is great God's great call and design for each of us. That being said, it is key to understand, therefore, that it is about our focus. We were created to live focused upon God. Every one of us were created to be live a life that is connected and focused upon God. And of course, we say, well, what does that look like? Well, in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, he talks about how that he would keep those in perfect peace whose minds are stayed upon him who live with a continual focus upon him, that there is perfect peace found whenever we live lives that is focused upon, upon him. For he says that those who do so are putting their trust in him. You see, whatever you give your attention to, whatever you are continually focused on, reveals what your reach, real true trust is. It is the law of focus. Whatever you're constantly thinking about, whatever is constantly your focus, it is what begins to drive and shape your beliefs, your words, your thoughts, your actions, your behavior, and your speech. That's why it's so important for us to maintain an appropriate focus because it is evidence of where our faith lies and the unity of the faith comes when we are all create who are created in his image and likeness are focused upon the one who made us and gave us life and upon his son whom he sent into the world not to condemn us but to save us and bring us to a life of connectedness and oneness with him here's what jesus said in saint john chapter 12 verse 32 he says if i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men unto me. 
Of course, the next verse said, thus he spake of what death he would die, talking about how he would be lifted up on the cross. Note what he says. When I am lifted up on the cross, I will draw all men unto me. I will be the one who draws all men. Well, friend, when I was growing up, they used to sing a song. I wonder who will left, help me know Jesus. Lift the Savior up until he speaks from eternity. For he said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Could it be? that we, he having been lifted up from the earth, it is now our part to lift up him and what he did, giving our continual focus to him. And in so doing, we will see all men drawn together uh, unto him that he can draw as we represent him, as we lift him up. I wonder who will help me lift Jesus. Will you help me lift Jesus? Let's lift him up today. By putting our focus upon him, let him be the center of our conversation, our point of trust and reference and all that we do. Let us, his ways, his thoughts, his character, what he said, govern, lead, and guide us. And I believe exactly what he said he would do. Just as surely as he was lifted up on that cross to save us from our sins, as we rest our trust in him, he'll lift us up. As we lift him up, he'll draw us together and oneness and calls us to overcome all the things that come against our homes, our communities, our world, and our time. This has been an outreach of Connected Church. Connect with us, connected-church.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, right here on this Gospel Exposures Outreach to the Tennessee Valley and beyond every single day where the dream of change is alive and Jesus is our joy. Knowing this, that together, y'all, we together are the difference that makes the difference as we awaken to God's purpose of knowing him and his love for us and mobilize to his mission of making him known and sharing his love with others. That's good news on this terrific Tuesday morning, faithful. Amen, amen. Let the church say amen, Pastor. Amen, amen. And you just keep doing what you're doing. Yep. We enjoy you each and every day. Thank you for being a part of WDJ all these years. You're doing a great job. Well, hey, it's awesome to be a part of blowing the gospel up across the Tennessee Valley and beyond. And you keep doing what you're doing as well. All right, Pastor. As we always say, have a great day on purpose. Ah, that sounds good to me. We'll do it. You do the same. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, hey, listen, uh, lift the Savior up, lift the Savior until he speaks from eternity. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Well, that's what we're commissioned for, y'all. Before he left, the last thing he said in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 and 19, he says, uh, all power in heaven and earth has been given to my hands. Now you go, therefore, and uh, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And he said, teaching them to observe all things that I have taught you. What was he saying? He was saying, go make disciples. Go make those who follow me. Take what I have done. Take my life. Take my character. Take my spirit. Take the things that you've seen in me. Show what I have done and uh, begin to spread it. And so, friend, may we together lift him up as he was lifted up. May we continue to declare who he is, what he's come to do. May we embrace him in our hearts, and may we also share it with others. I believe we have a solution. We have an answer. It's in lifting the Savior up. All right. Well, hey, listen. Remember this always. Remember it continually. God loves himself some you. He do, too. You matter to God and you matter to us. Go ahead and have a terrific Tuesday and do it on purpose. You're authorized. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye for now.